so we can create in main for the shapes abstract class we can create a an array of circles once we do that we can see how it would look in memory so const size has its <clears throat> address of three right so x100 holds three circles point to the first element so we have 96 92 and 88 so we have uh, circle 0 circle 1 and circle 2 and then we can access them like this if we were to execute this program which i've already done right then we get circle 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 why that's what we've told the draw overwritten circle function to do just display circle okay while i'm here uh, actually back here while i'm here we can also say well you say this points to an address so show me we can say okay i want to create a pointer to circle pointer equals circles and then i can say okay pointer draw let me go ahead and uh, create two new lines there execute this program so we have three circles one two three two lines one two and then finally we say pointer call the draw function right so we know that pointer points to this address here and thus that's why we can say pointer draw and if we uh, follow that code or diagram that code that I've just written we have a pointer to circle pointer equals circles circles as we know points to CO the pointer gets its own address on the stack here and it's pointing to what this is holding 96 so then we draw an arrow point to x96 for this reason when we do pointer draw then it draws the circle right and uh, we need to make sure we remember that that there is a relationship between arrays and pointers okay so let me commit this and push it okay if we want to call a constructor our circles uh, example in lines constructor with shapes doesn't have any constructor so we'll jump back to the bank account which does have constructors right so let me eliminate this code for now so when we do this C++ calls a default constructor that we've created so all our balances should be zero so we come here run in terminal notice all balances are zero we can init use an initializer list to initialize values to some <clears throat> value other than zero and when we execute it then we should get 50 100 and 150 as the output and we do okay questions here okay so no questions so again c++ is managing the memory all we are doing is instead of creating one circle we are creating a list of circles okay that is important to understand that that is what we are doing okay let me see what do i need to cover here okay so since i'm here with this example i've purposely just done this just to to explain the diagram if we have a list or an array right an array of objects we can always revert to the four ranged 
loop to easily iterate through the list. And notice how simple it is, like we don't even have to really do much, right? C++ behind the scenes manages everything for us. And again, this is in modern C++, right? So we can uh, go here and notice we have uh, 5100, 150, 5100, 150, right? So we output here and then we loop to output also. So anytime you need to loop through objects and when possible use the for range although you can still use a traditional for loop that's the one that has the index right for for i for integer i equals i less than the size or whatever right but here like c plus plus ticks covered for us behind the scenes so we don't we don't have to write a lot of code and just to show you that we can also have a pointer to account And then we can say uh, C out. We want to work with the value, so we say asterisk pointer. And let me see. Let me go there, fix that piece. Maybe add two new lines there. Execute it. And we have uh, 50 at the bottom, right? So I added two new lines here. And then what is accounts pointing to? Assuming this was a diagram for accounts, it's pointing to the first element. So we have a pointer to accounts. The first element is savings account with 50 balance. And that's what we get when we uh, display that. Okay, so questions here? Also, just to clarify, if you want to access a function, do not use the asterisk. Just use the pointer name, arrow, and then you can access. They are, there are other ways, but this is the most the simplest way and the simplest code for accessing this. Okay, if you read the book, the book would have shown you at least one or two other ways, but this is the easiest and the less confusing one, right? So, and this is the one that's predominantly used out in the industry. So, 50, right? So, we're just doing get balance. So, this is also how you can uh, call a function. Okay, questions here? Okay, I think there's no questions. No questions, okay. All of these examples that I've done so far are on the stack. C++ manages that memory. The stack is limited in size. So if we want to work with large lists, then the stack is not the best place for them. But once we do that, then we have to either, of course, use a vector, which we've done, but now we're going lower level. We want to use basic C++ arrays to create lists. So then we have to work with dynamic memory. Okay. So we'll, we'll start with simple dynamic memory of an integer, and we'll show you how that works, and then we'll work to list, okay? And then we'll point out some issues with dynamic memory, okay? I'll come back to this dynamic array of objects, okay? So we come here, and uh, dynamic memory in C++ is on the heap. If you are not using smart pointers, then it's your responsibility or the developer's responsibility to create memory, create dynamic memory, 
use the memory and then very important delete or clear the memory from the heap although the heap is large in size it's not infinite so if we're not cleaning memory and we're constantly in the creating memory mode then we will encounter what is a memory leak we'll be grabbing memory using memory grabbing memory using memory grabbing memory using memory and if our application runs 24 7 which most tend to do nowadays we're going to exhaust the memory and then our application will crash very common issue out in the industry right there's a lot of companies out there that make money by creating memory utilities that go out and inspect code and applications while they're running to try and find those memory leaks right so this concept very easy create memory use memory delete memory and as i've stated before this is a difficult part like how long am i going to need that memory to be on the heap and the common best practices guide is will always try to minimize that scope as much as you can and that sounds easy but it, it, it's not easy right because i mean how do you know how long you're going to need that in that data in memory right okay that was one issue constantly getting memory so we get memory we get memory get memory get memory get memory eventually our heap is exhausted our application crashes another issue i'm not gonna write the code for this is the issue of a dangling pointer so we create memory with one pointer okay and then we have another pointer let me go here we have another pointer that points oops i wanted to use a different color that points to the same memory the programmer deletes the memory for the first pointer so the memory is deleted and this memory is also deleted and now we have a pointer that is pointing to a region of memory that our program no longer uh or that is no longer valid so that concept is known like as uh, we will be pointing to what is commonly known as garbage and there'll be an algorithm that eventually overwrites or, or reassigns those addresses uh, and if our application runs constantly by the time this pointer accesses this data again that data may be some other form of data and then we will be producing invalid runtime results right so so this is another very common issue out in the industry okay how do we uh get around those issues right so we always try to limit the scope and i'll have some examples right so we start simple so we have uh, an example that creates an integer dynamically uses it by displaying it and then we delete it okay let's go ahead and do that and let me see where do we write that code uh, module 9 okay module nine. dynamic memory okay okay so we start easy we're like okay so let's create a use dynamic memory example we accept an integer to initialize the value of the number we will be creating okay when you want to create memory you have to use a pointer so we want a num pointer we have to use the keyword new so new the data type and we can initialize it with some value create dynamic memory we create it and uh, now we will use it see out we want the value that it points to so we say asterisk to dereference the pointer that should display whatever the value of num is and then we delete the pointer 
Now, in the real programs, it's not this easy, right? But I mean, I have to start with a simple example. Clear memory. So create memory, use memory, clear memory. Very simple concept. We come to main. Include dynamic memory. Use dynamic memory. And maybe we send in the value 5. And we can go ahead and execute this piece. Okay, so 5, right? Nothing magical, really. But let's go and look at the diagram. Um, again, well, I have 50 there. Let me uh, no. What value do I have here? Three. So I, okay, I didn't write the function. Okay, so we can work with three. That's fine. Let me just to make this the same. I'll have a value of three there. Although I don't have a function, but still, like we are sending in the number three to the integer. Okay. So then we know the size. We'll get an address on the stack again, assuming that we've already diagrammed all the memory for main but our focus now is just on this right we don't want to have all the clutter for the activation record for main we say okay i want to create a pointer so pointer gets its own address and then we say okay i want to create a new integer or dynamic memory on the heap initialize it with the value three okay so if we diagram this then this is what we will see we'll see on the heap an address is granted to us randomly so assuming it's some address that ends in 50 and the pointer always holds an address so it'll hold x50 and then we draw the arrow to show that we are pointing to this on the heap right and when we uh, execute this statement here see how uh, D reference or asterisk num pointer we're saying see out the value that you are pointing to so we're like okay so what are you pointing to 3 so then it outputs 3 okay once we say delete num pointer then deletion starts happening okay let me use a different color so then it is no longer uh, pointing to that address actually it this one x50 will stay in memory but some other variable is going to use that memory address and overwrite that value okay but the fact is that we are no longer pointing to dynamic memory thus releasing this memory and this slot right here becomes available to our program to reuse or to windows to reuse okay more than likely our program right and that's what happens when we say delete num pointer and we have done what we needed to do create memory use the memory clear the memory all within the scope of this function right so <clears throat> very simple example that shows you how to limit the scope that you will use the memory for right never this simple so let's create another example but before that are there any questions here no it it clears it clears this memory c++ is managing this piece right c++, c++ manages the stack like c++ manages this and this so when we say delete we are deleting memory we created dynamically the stack manages these variables okay so once once this is cleared then whatever other sequence runs in our program will take this address and overwrite this with some other value 
we don't end up with a dangling pointer we don't end up with memory leaks i mean we only have one pointer a dangling pointer is a concept of two pointers pointing to memory this pointer deletes the memory this one's still pointing to memory which is invalid so then our program will usually not crash but instead produce invalid results right and we usually don't want to do that <clears throat> okay so that was very simple but what about with functions right so i mean we're not into classes yet but we are with functions so we can say okay let's go ahead and create some functions to try and uh, limit the scope so we can say pointer return pointer return dynamic memory accepts a number <clears throat> and then we'll simply say okay I want to create a pointer create new memory Not yet. And then we simply return. Why? Because we say we want to return a pointer. So then we return num pointer. So we are creating memory, returning the pointer that points to that memory. Okay. And now let's create another function. We'll diagram this too. Okay. First, I'll write the code. We're like, okay, let's try to limit dynamic memory scope. And no. And then we can say, okay, I want to create a pointer and call return dynamic memory is this valid code yes this returns a pointer to integer i'm creating a pointer to integer to hold the address that num pointer would have been pointing to but num pointer once this function exit num pointer is gone right <clears throat> but the address that <clears throat> that pointer was pointing to is now assigned to val in here we can use it we'll simply say see uh, whatever you are pointing to and then we can delete okay <clears throat> okay so let me see here <clears throat> let me <clears throat> oops not what I wanted to do Okay. Okay. So let's walk through what's happening here, right? We're not going to we're not going to worry about the stack activation records, but we'll talk about them because they'll help us understand how the address jumps from here to here, okay? Or not the address, the address that was created on the heap is transferred from return dynamic memory to limit dynamic memory scope okay so <clears throat> in main we call limit dynamic memory scope with a value 10 limit dynamic memory scope ex executes the first example right so then we have a spot for it right what is it pointing to initially 
whatever was in that address cell before. We don't know, right? But immediately there's a call place to return dynamic memory with the value 10. This code executes, so then we have a pointer. Assuming this is the activation record, these two addresses are the activation record for limit dynamic memory, and the activation record for return dynamic memory is here, right? Then this is the address for this pointer. And then it creates new memory on the heap, and assuming that we got Y92, so then this one points to Y92. Let me delete this for now. And what is in there? The value 10, okay? Return num pointer. So recall from activation records, part of the activation record uh, variables is the return value. So in this return value, we have y92, y92, right? So y92 is sent to limit dynamic memory scope. So then from, from the activation record for return dynamic memory is copied into there, right? So that's, so now that's like, oh, okay, so now pointer val now has x92 and then we know that this will be removed from memory when return dynamic memory exits. This is removed from memory, this is removed from memory, and this is removed from memory, but by the time that happens, we already had this pointer pointing to that address okay so when we say see out point to the address that you are pointing to then val's like okay so what am i pointing to 182 the value there is 10 so i will output the value 10 <clears throat> and let's run the program to see that we have to go to main and we say uh limit dynamic memory scope with the value 10 <clears throat> run and we see the value 10 right i mean very simple output but <clears throat> if we look at the details there's a lot going on here right so then we display 10 and then immediately we say delete <clears throat> the val pointer so then it no longer points to that address Right, and then this block will be released. And in our code, nothing else is happening. We're returning, but if there was more code here, then that address would more likely be reused and get some new address, uh, new value into that address, right? So important thing to understand is that now we've cleared the memory, we've deleted the memory, we don't have a memory leak resource and then our program starts exiting, and then everything's removed from memory. If we had more code here, it would be fine. Like we grab memory, we use the memory, and then we released the memory, which is our goal, right? Like we don't want to hold on to the memory for long periods of time. Not always that easy, but at least we more or less have some pattern to follow, right? Very basic pattern but it gives gives you a building block for managing memory, right? And hopefully as this lecture progresses, then you can appreciate why I always leave this toward the end of the semester and just focus on getting students comfortable with how C++ programming uh, works and get you comfortable with C++. And then by the time we get here, then at least you're just learning something new, right? And it's not easy, like these concepts are not easy but they are very important for developers, right? If you understand this, then you'll be on your way to being a very good developer, okay? So any questions here? Let me see here. Uh, questions?
Okay, so no questions. <clears throat> okay. What is what is happening here? We are 100% responsible for managing memory. Remember, smart pointers were created by expert C++ developers. So if we can somehow combine this logic or this pattern with shared pointers, then we are kind of using a hybrid approach. We're creating memory, but we're letting the smart pointer manage its lifetime for us, and that way limiting the risk of creating a memory leak, right? That and That's what we take when we take ownership of creating and managing memory 100% of the time. So one of the other options is to use a hybrid approach. And let me create that example, right? So we do something like this, but then we create an extra function that brings in the smart pointer off the bench, and then we leave the memory management or the memory deletion, excuse me, to the smart pointer. Okay, so what was this? Just one element, okay? What was this? One element. What's this? Just one element. So we're just creating one element, one item on the heap. If we want to work with an array and we want to create memory dynamically for that array, we can, okay? But since it's an array and we can run into problems very, very quickly by just missing one delete, then our program can cause a severe headaches, okay? So that's why the recommended approach for working with dynamic arrays is to recruit the help of smart pointer. So let's start, okay? A pointer to a dynamic array, so we get dynamic array and then we say uh, let's size of t size oops I'll have to go back to the header and uh, type the function prototype okay so there we go okay so let me make sure include memory okay okay so i include memory and then that should be good okay i'm good so then we're like okay let's create an array right so we'll say create dynamic array just so that we can track what's following okay i mean what's happening create dynamic array and we're like okay so let me create a pointer to a pointer to integer and then we say okay I want to create new integer but we use the subscript operator and size to show that we want to create an array or a list on the heap okay return pointer to integer we will gladly do that we'll say return nums okay so this simply creates the dynamic memory. And then we're like, okay, so let's create a function, delete dynamic array that accepts a pointer to the array. And here we'll say uh, delete dynamic array and then we'll simply say well delete anytime we want to delete an array that's created dynamically we have to use a subscript operator like this and then we say array and that's it for this function finally we're like okay so use dynamic array and this is where we can use the smart pointer okay so 
we want size that's a parameter and then we can say okay I want to create a smart pointer remember there's a unique pointer and a shared pointer and a weak pointer we've used unique pointer this example will require a shared pointer because it has the functionality that we need to make the, this example work okay so let me do this a shared pointer to a list of integers and then nums that's the name of our variable and then we say call the function get dynamic array pass in size as a parameter so notice uh, this will return a pointer which we will use as a function argument but then we will also call this function by itself in here as a second parameter and that should so, so, uh, sound some alarms because what I'm using a function as a parameter can I do that yes because remember from activation records the function is loaded onto the stack and it's loaded onto an address so then C++ will get that address and feed it into the shared pointer okay so what are we saying here okay in layman's term we're saying hey I'm going to create a dynamic array of integers with the get dynamic array function but I'm going to leave the deletion of this array to the shared pointer the shared pointer will know when I need to get rid of it once that happens then it'll call this function and then my array will be deleted okay so then we're like okay so let's do something simple like for size of t i equals zero i less than size plus plus i and then simply see out the nums at current i new line character okay so let's walk through this code before we run it but let me go here uh, what did I call it get uh, oh I didn't create the header oh, use dynamic array use uh, deletes not there either so let me get delete into the header file okay so there we go use dynamic array okay use dynamic array we only create three elements that's fine run it Uh, keep on adding that extra symbol. Let me see here. Uh, that's not causing the error, but I'll still remove it. Okay. Okay, here it is. Yeah. Okay, so let's build it. And uh, let's go ahead and run it. Run in terminal. And let me see, what did I do? Uh, use dynamic memory. Oh, that's the first one. Use dynamic array. Okay, I called the wrong function. Use dynamic array. Run in terminal. Okay, so so we create dynamic memory. So this is called use dynamic array. This statement's executed, get dynamic array executes. So this 
code executes returns a pointer to dynamic memory for us. And then we tell the smart pointer, hey, uh, hold on to delete dynamic array. Once you determine that I'm not using this array anymore, then go ahead and call delete dynamic array for me and delete the array. When will that happen? Well, we look through here, and once the function starts exiting here, then that's when the array will start uh, the deletion process, right? Okay, so let's run it again. So notice, right, exiting, use dynamic array function, and then delete dynamic array. But let's see, well, maybe we should see, well, when is that stuff happening, right? So maybe we can say uh, enter, and then we'll say exit. put it into the header file okay and let's run it again uh, let me find this okay uh, I'm looking for enter Create dynamic array. Where's my enter? I don't see it. Enter. Create exit zero. Uh. Okay, let me run it again. Okay, enter. And then enter where? This one. So enter. And then we know that this statement executes. It calls get dynamic array. So then it displays create dynamic array. So create dynamic array is created. And the pointer is returned, or the address is returned to the shared pointer. It saves it. And then we have this in our back pocket, delete dynamic array, use the memory. Once we no longer need the memory, then exit the function. Notice once the function starts exiting, exiting use dynamic array function then <clears throat> the array is deleted before <clears throat> the function finishes executing how do we know because we have the see out exit and that's right here so by the time <clears throat> we get back here <coughs> excuse me <coughs> the memory is no longer uh, referenced and we clear it and then our program if we had more code could continue successfully right so we would have done the same thing which is get memory use the memory clear the memory okay always what we are shooting for okay, let me see if there's questions here okay no questions any questions So if we would see that in memory, we would, uh, the size was what? So we, the size as a parameter that was sent in would be, I think it was three, right? Temporarily would exist and then a pointer would be created there. Which pointer? The nums pointer. And I'll show you the code right now. I'm not gonna write everything, okay? We have the shared pointer, okay, and in memory, I'll end, I'll write the end result, right, because I don't have time to map everything. We would have uh, three zeros here, assuming this is like some address. Okay, yeah, so I'm trying to map this, okay, so 
we have three, which is the parameter we send in here. I'm not gonna draw the whole diagram because I don't have time, right? So then we call dynamic memory and we get three slots, uh, maybe Y48. So then this would point to Y48 right there. And then we can assume that this returns, we have the memory already, we loop through the memory. <clears throat> Once the function starts exiting, then this would be removed. This one becomes eligible to be overwritten. And this one also becomes eligible to be overwritten. The important thing to understand is that we would be creating memory on the heap, right? So all zeros, but that's okay. Like, I'll just show that <clears throat> the heap memory was created. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to the next example. And I won't take questions because I have to finish these examples. Okay, I'll take them at, at the end. We got what, 20 minutes, yeah, so we should be able to finish. Okay, so we work with simply a list of uh, simple types, right? But now we wanna uh, dynamically. So now we wanna create a list of uh, objects, right? Dynamically, so. So we're like, okay, so let's create a list of dynamic objects, right? So let me see, I have the example here. And we start and we go back to the shapes example. Okay, so let's go back to that example. Main. Okay, so here we have a list on the stack. Now we want to create a list on the <coughs> heap. Okay, so then we're like, okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So we have a size of three, so then we can say, okay, let me create a shape pointer named shapes, and I want to create a new circle of size okay so let me see shape is there pointer to shapes <clears throat> shape not shapes okay okay so that should clear this up well actually well let me keep the same name that way i don't have to make whole, a lot of changes so we'll make this circles since this is circles, okay? And I guess for now, we do this, okay. So, we have a pointer to shape named circles, and we create circles. Okay, will this execute? Well, let's find out. Circle, circle, circle. So it executes, okay? How does it look in memory? I already have a diagram because I don't have a lot of time, right? So we have a shape pointer. And then we're like, okay, so what does pointer circles point to? It points to an address. What's the address? Assuming it's X70, right? So then circle one, two, or three, or zero, one, two are created on the heap okay and we can access them circles of zero circles of one circles of two and any questions here one thing we need to always make sure we do is we need to remember to clear what we create right so after I do this, then this reference is gone and then this can be overwritten, right? And this would be gone eventually too. Let's make sure our program still runs. And it still runs, okay? So that's how we will create a, uh, <clears throat> a list of circles on the heap but 
it would be better if we could create lines and circles here we're just creating we have a point of the circles but we have to work with circles so in essence I mean, we've really not gained much right I mean we uh, what if I want to create line circle line well right now <clears throat> I can't do that Mm -mm 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 -mm. So how will we get there? <clears throat> we have to create a different type of list. I mean, it's still an array but we have to create the concept of a list that has a list of pointers and then we initialize each pointer to some type okay so let me jump here dynamic array of dynamic objects okay so before I draw it let's recall how this looks like so we say a pointer to shape and create an array of circle so then we're like okay we use new so we know that we are creating heap memory and we have circle one circle two circle three okay but I want this to be maybe line one circle and line okay I want to mix them that's my goal so diagram first okay just pick some crazy value there and we're like okay so what I want to do is I want to create a pointer to a pointer okay so assuming this was my stack address this will be pointing to y40 right there and then this would be pointer one pointer two pointer three and let me purposefully just draw a few more lines here okay so I, I tell the compiler hey uh, give me three addresses of pointers and C++ is like okay you got them right here and now I'm like okay I want this pointer to be a circle I want this one to be a line and I want this one to be a circle okay so assuming uh, we have what, uh, 36 32 assuming that this is circle one pointer one points to it and then assuming that magically the other one would be line one here And this one points to it and then finally I would have circle 2 here uh, 44 48 52 56 right so this one would be uh, I say 56 60 64 and then finally this one would point to that one and then I would have then I, would, I have now mixed types right I have a pointer to shapes 
and then each pointer is pointing to an instance of a shape either circle line or circle right so that's what I'm trying to do and that's how I can get this to work pointer to pointer right so I have a pointer to a pointer and then I have a uh, dynamic array of dynamic objects or a dynamic array of dynamic pointers right however you want to say it so let's let's do this okay so we're like okay so let's come here Okay, so uh, we have a pointer to a pointer, right? So double asterisk means a pointer to a pointer. We name it shapes, and then we say equals new shape. Hey, wait, I thought I couldn't create an instance of shape. No, I'm not. I'm creating a pointer, a dynamic instance of a pointer to a shape, okay? Uh, size so that's why C++ lets me write that code and then I can say okay so shapes of 0 equals new circle shapes of 1 equals new line shapes of 2 equals new circle and I have what I'm looking for then I can say well let me try shapes of zero it's a pointer to a shape and this is new so then it's like a pointer so then we're like oh it's a pointer we need to use the arrow operator and then we can say shapes draw Shapes one draw and shapes two draw. Okay, and then we can say okay, delete shapes at zero, shapes at one. Shapes at two and delete shapes. Ah, and you can see how messy it can get, right? Cleaning the memory up. So usually we would have a loop, right? But I wanted to go step by step. I wanted to go step by step to hopefully make it clearer. Okay, uh, warning, let me see here. Um, deleting all the chess. Okay, we'll hit this next week, right? That warning, it's talking about a destructor. We've talked about constructors. We've not introduced <clears throat> destructors yet, mainly because we are not creating classes that use dynamic memory. We are creating... <clears throat> a list of dynamic memory of objects but our circle and our bank account they don't create dynamic memory within the class okay <clears throat> so now it is now we have <clears throat> circle 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 <clears throat> circle line circle circle line circle so draw 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 <clears throat> and then we had to make sure we clear the memory. Why do we have to go through all this trouble? Well, first thing, we create dynamic memory of a pointer to shapes. And then we create one, two, three instances of concrete classes, circle, line, circle. So then we have to delete them 
<clears throat> in the opposite order of creation, right? We delete uh, this batch first and finally this one, right? So then we say uh, delete shape 0, 1, 2, and finally delete the pointer to shapes. <clears throat> and uh, that's the dynamic array of dynamic objects, right? So that's how we could work with different types of objects with the concept of a pointer to a pointer. <clears throat> Questions? <laughs> okay so in review <clears throat> we went <clears throat> and talked about creating dynamic memory <clears throat> in functions which is uh, what we want to do right in functions will kind of limit limit the scope of the dynamic memory's existence, okay? <clears throat> if we take 100% ownership of writing the code like we did in this example. Oops, let me jump over here. return dynamic memory and limit dynamic memory <clears throat> if we do this we are responsible for creating memory we are responsible for deleting the memory after we use it okay if we're not comfortable that and we shouldn't right we should also use the hybrid approach where we create memory dynamically we create the code to delete the memory but we use the help of the shared pointer to help us clear the dynamic memory when it is no longer needed by our program, right? Very simple example here, but if we follow this pattern, then we limit the, ch the risk of creating a memory leak, right? And this is best practice standard for uh, the industry, right? And using dynamic memory in C++. We also uh, finally went through the examples of creating dynamic memory <coughs> for user-defined types, and then we uh, create a very simple example to use them, okay? And then we went ahead and uh, did the same thing, but we want now to create a list of different types, because this one, notice, we just work with circle, but shapes has circles and lines and many other shapes if we would create the classes for them. But if we can create a list that handles two types of concrete objects or derived classes, circle and line, then we can we can work with many other types, right? And then we use the concept of a pointer to a pointer, where we create a pointer list dynamically in memory, and then we go in and tell each pointer that it, we want them to point to a new instance of circle, line, and circle, and then we make sure that we cleaned up memory, right? So this step right here is very important. We don't we don't want to uh, not release memory, okay? The next lectures uh, next week will focus on creating memory in classes, and we'll uh, take about three or four lectures to get through through building that vector class. But that'll that'll put the concepts we, we've learned here. This is just creating memory with functions. The next lectures will be how to create memory in classes and make sure that we're not uh, creating memory leaks and that we are. Uh, creating classes like the string class or the vector class that can manage memory for the user without the user having to worry about managing the memory, right? So that's what we'll do next week. Questions? Uh, stop here.